So in terms of a flowchart, uh, let's first introduce uh, the gradient-based algorithm uh, for finding the minimum distance point. Uh, here what you have is the u1, u2 space uh, in two dimension and we have h equals zero, the mapped limit state equation uh, and then the failure region is also known. So we need a method to find the minimum distance point. So let's go uh, step by step. So we obtain h and then we always have to have an initial guess. So uh, let the initial guess be u and the superscript uh, indicates the iteration number. So we are talking about the uh, zeroth iteration. And then uh, we compute the distance from the origin to this um, initial guess. And then uh, we also compute the functional value at that point. Uh, we compute the gradients of the function at that point. Uh, and obviously the gradient vector is very useful because it points in the direction of the most rapid increase of that function. So that's, that's the basis. Uh, and then uh, we set, uh, we store the distance, uh, we obtain uh, the gradients alpha uh, by normalizing uh, the gradients of h. Uh, I'm sorry, we obtain the direction cosines alpha by normalizing the gradients h u. So h u is the partial derivative of h with respect to u1 and u2 uh, as the case may be. And then we obtain a new point, the next one in the iteration uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, the direction cosines uh, in terms of uh, the earlier stored distance beta and a uh, correction factor which depends on the current value of the function and its uh, the, the norm of its gradient. So uh, we do this until u and beta uh, converge. So if the answer is yes within whatever tolerance we have decided, uh, we stop. Otherwise, we uh, increase the counter by m uh, by 1. So m becomes m plus 1 and we repeat the process until convergence happens and hopefully convergence will occur. Now uh, on this um, plot, let us uh, uh, identify the, the key steps. So let, let us say there is um uh, as we are somewhere in the middle of this process and so that's our point uh, in orange and uh, uh, we have the vector uh, from the origin. So uh, we know what the function is uh, at that point. So we know uh, the um, h of uh, u uh, going through that point, uh, which happens to be negative. So uh, h of u is negative beyond the limit states towards the failure region as we know very well. Uh, we can draw the tangent to this limit state uh, at um, we can find the unit normal and uh, we can draw a parallel line uh, to that unit normal from the origin and that actually has the direction cosines alpha. Uh, and then uh, what we do is we make uh, a correction that would be the last step on the flowchart on the left and project it on that uh, direction alpha m and that would get us our new point uh, u of m plus 1 and we keep doing this until we finally reach the optimal point uh, which doesn't require any further correction and that is our u star and that distance is beta. Now let's probe a little deeper uh, as to how this works. So let's, let's um, see how we get uh, these alphas and the partials of h with respect to u uh, and why we need to normalize uh, the uh, h sub u and so on. So uh, let's, let's uh, 
look at a three-dimensional plot u1 and u2 as we had before and the, the third dimension actually is the functional value so above the u1 u2 plane it's positive and below uh, it's negative and that's what we identify as failure uh, so this h surface wherever it cuts the u1 u2 plane is actually my limit state equation the line separating the safe from the failed uh, domains so um, we identify uh, two uh, triangles on the u1h and u2h uh, plane in terms of the gradient of h with respect to u1 the gradient of h with respect to u2 and the height of the function at that point h so uh, that gives me the height along with uh, the gradients h u1 and h u2 give me delta u1 and delta u2 the distance traveled along uh, u1 and u2 axis as the function comes down from h uh, towards the u1 u2 plane so uh, in terms of simple uh, trigonometry this is the expression of uh, delta u1 and delta u2 that you see on your screen which we are going to use next uh, and now uh, we covered the, the uh, three points of intersection uh, on the three axis and that is the that gives me the direction along which the search wants to move so uh, the projection of that is the dashed line that you see uh, on on the u1 u2 plane uh, and that is actually the delta of u so that is the next incremental distance that i want to move to to get to my next point so from um i'll go to um plus one now uh, we need to to do that we need to know the angles and theta 1 uh, is the angle that you see uh, and theta 2 is the angle that you see so those will give me the direction cosines alpha uh, it's easy to find out cosine of theta 2 uh, in terms of uh, delta u's and by plugging back the relation between uh, h and delta u1 and delta u2 i obtain the cosine of theta 2 as the partial of h with respect to u2 over the norm of the gradients and there's a negative value there uh, for obvious reasons uh, as uh, u1 increases h actually reduces in value decreases in value so goes for u2 so that's why the negative uh, sign is there uh, continuing this way we uh, can define alpha 1 also alpha 2 is cosine of theta 2 alpha 1 is uh, cosine of theta 1 so we can generalize this that the alpha vector is uh, the uh, gradient vector of h with respect to u normalized by the norm of uh, the gradients so that's that's the arrow that you see uh, on the on the left that's the red arrow that i just pointed so that is the reason behind uh, why we compute alpha that way the other correction that we make in terms of the distance uh, the the value uh, of delta u the the norm of delta u is what you see in terms of the second red arrow and uh, in terms of uh, h and the norm of h u um, it's given uh, as you see we get it from simple uh, geometry from uh, on the u1 u2 plane uh, so together uh, that gives me the uh, vector delta u that i need to move in order to get to my next point now uh, there is I can make an improvement to the search process to this line search process if I make sure that I do not travel very far from the uh, h equals 0 line 
So if every time I uh, try to move away from uh, the h equals 0 line, I would like to come back to that line itself because that's my constraint. I want to find the minimum distance uh, to this line. So I I need to only look for points on this line h equals 0. So that's what you see a change uh, from the previous algorithm that we presented. So uh, if our new point could be given in terms of the old point plus a fraction or a multiple of the incremental vector delta u and there would be ways of choosing uh, that factor gamma and which could vary from iteration to iteration and then uh, the u that I get the m plus 1th iteration that I get I would like to adjust it until I'm back at h m equals 0 so I'm back at the limit state line itself uh, so there are ways of doing that and um, so uh, there is this so-called Armijo's rule uh, which uses a sort of bounding uh, uh, action so we need to find uh, the value of gamma that satisfies these two limits and uh, once we do that uh, we can keep adjusting uh, u m plus 1 until we are back at uh, h equals 0 and that is done uh, in this iterative manner. So once uh, we are reasonably close then uh, we move uh, to again the upper block and um, we find uh, a new uh, um, a new uh, hu and so on until uh, we are uh, we have converged. So uh, this uh, can sometimes help matters uh, when uh, the, the previous algorithm uh, has some convergence problems or some oscillation type behavior.